Anytime. Hey, this is Bobby Amaru from Saliva wearing my seatbelt, and you are listening to Brutally Delicious Podcast. What's happening? Hey, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, I've literally, I've been home not 24 hours, and like, yeah, I'm about to go get on a plane to go to Alaska. So it's just, it's all good. Glad it worked out. Yeah, you guys, you guys got a show in Alaska. Yep. Nice. A, where you where are you that's playing? A long way to go for a show, right? Yeah, Thursday. Um. So yeah, we get out. We he Wayne and I don't land until like 2 a.m. I guess tomorrow or tonight they uh and they're like four hours behind east coast where i'm at so um i guess technically it'd be like 6 a.m here right when I land. uh so we have all day tomorrow wednesday to do like salmon fishing and stuff they'll take us on which is cool really cool and then uh oh, yeah and then um we do we got the show on thursday they've been oh, bringing nice. a lot a lot of shows there man it's been cool like uh we played there two years ago during the pandemic, which was awesome. And then um, we, uh, but they, they just had Tesla last Saturday. They got, they got a lot of bands that are in the summer that they bring in. I've noticed that they're doing a lot more shows up there. I have a friend that lives up there and he keeps telling me he's going to these shows. I'm like, wow. Like he's right. like Foo Fighters. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. They did like the arena stuff. Yeah. There. And yeah. They sold out in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he told me if, if a band shows up, it sells out. That's the way it is. <laughs> Dude, it is like that. I mean, we're like at a thousand pre-sale, and I think the place holds a thousand. So I don't know. <laughs> wow. That's great, so, man. Yeah, it'll be it'll be good, man. It'll be great. So, so. anyway, we could uh, jump right in and talk about saliva then. So the uh every 20 years EP um I guess was out. How did you guys, you re-recorded them with your vocals, but how did you guys select the songs? Did you just go by what was the most popular or how did you pick the six or seven that are on there? Well, we wanted to go with, you know, the the obvious choices, which were the singles like Your Disease and Click, Click, Boom. Otherwise, it just wouldn't have made sense to do anything like that. Um, and then with the other ones, yeah, we did want to do like a couple of the record cuts that were, that were, uh, like fan favorites, like mm -hmm. after, and then um, greater than less than, and then we did uh, Spy Hunter, which wasn't on the record, but it was recorded in the same year. Um, and uh, hold on one second, yeah, recorded the same year uh, for the Spy Hunter game, and then we ended up just, you know, uh, we wanted to do a cover song. We had done a cover record in the during the pandemic, and we got a bunch of covers done, which actually. Some of those songs are pretty awesome. Uh, and we just, we felt like we didn't want to do, throw a cover on that was like too far, like where people weren't going to get it. So we put, we did Spoon Man um, and we lost, you know, Soundgarden and right. all that stuff too. So that was the one that we chose just because it felt like it, it, it fit more on the EP than some of the other covers that we had done. What's been the response to it so far? Well, that came out um, like in yeah, May, right? Yeah, yeah, last last year, and uh, man, it was good. You know, I mean, you, it's like anything else, dude. People like things they hit; they don't like things. It's just, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm just being honest. That's just the way it is. I mean, it's you know, you're gonna have people that 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 they want to fucking hate something just to fucking hate it, right? You know? and, and like, or, or oh man, that band's not cool, or they're my dad likes them, or. Okay, then don't listen to it. I don't know. I mean, it is kind of strange how how social media culture has turned things into well, into yeah, items. Be, sometimes, you know, you're giving people a platform that shouldn't have a platform, in my opinion. Like you're giving you just there's there's too much too many ignorant people that like 20 years ago their friends would have said, "Dude, just shut up, don't talk." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that kind of stuff. So. But now they have this this keyboard and this or their phone and they can just they can post what they want. You know, it's like I think the, the most one of the craziest things is you know, a band can put a song out and you'll get so much negative stuff. And I guarantee you that 
the people haven't even heard it. They didn't even listen to it. They're yeah. just, they just want to write something negative to write something negative. It's like, wow, okay. How many likes can I get on my negative post? How many laughs can then, I get on my negative post? You know? And a, and a lot of, a lot of, um, I don't even know what to call them. I don't want to call them like music magazines or something like that, but like they put clickbait headlines out in order to get that negative reaction. Right. Absolutely. Well, because that's what, is it always media has always been like that. I mean, look at the news, yeah. I mean, our news and we go to other countries, like, you know, we went to Australia, you know, I had the news on just ironically. And, and like the worst thing that happened that day was there was an altercation on a ship between two guys one guy shoved one guy and he almost fell in the water i swear to god yeah that was the craziest thing that happened that day i'm like wow okay they must really think america's news is like you know crazy so i got a question for you this is not saliva related but what do you think the reason for all that negativity is well why people want to feed that negativity man i think that when it comes to like the new, like news, I feel like they've always thrived on that. That's how you get people engaged because people want to watch destruction. People want to watch rebellion. People want to watch that stuff. And there's people that are against it. Like, you know, like that, like, I don't want to watch that or whatever. And like, anytime I see anything negative pop up on my feed or whatever, I just, I'd like exit and like delete it. And like, right. You know, just so I, I don't want to see it. You know, and I always put irrelevant. <laughs> right. yeah. I would just say irrele- it's irrelevant, you know. This is this is a really important fact that you're making is taking control of the way the algorithm interacts with you, you right. know? Right. Because the more you do that, the less negative stuff you see. Yeah. And I just had like a, I had, you know, I've got two kids that my son's, uh, you know, about to be 15. My daughter's uh, just turned 11 and I just had a baby girl. So everything on my feed right now is baby stuff. Buy this, buy that. Hey, you need, right. <laughs> yeah. hey, breast pump. Here you know. <laughs> right. Hey, I might need one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting how, how that, how that does work. Yeah. But, well, uh, algorithms lead everything in our lives right now, whether we like it or not, you know? Because we, yeah. we ha- like, even right now, we're using Zoom, you know, there it's, you definitely know they're collecting data, right? Like, there's no question about it. Right. So it will, it, it, but that is how the, the world works. That's how a lot of these big companies, they thrive on the engagements of, of um, you know, what we're doing and how we're interacting. And they, they want to, you know, target us to either watch those things or buy those things or you know, oh, yeah. it's like, yeah, but I don't know, man. I'm more of like, just be a good human. Be yes. a good human people, man. Like, I don't care who you vote for. I don't care what color you are, where you come from. I really what don't. you believe in, it doesn't even matter. Right. Yeah. Be a good, be a good person, man. And like, do the right thing, you know, because a lot of people that go out there and like the whole thing that happened in Highland Park, you're like, man, do these people that this dude just literally didn't care about. They all have families, man. They all have kids. They all have like parents. It's like, it's just fucked up, you know? So yes. fucked up. So. Even in uh, man, that was, that was sketch or in Buffalo. I, yeah. yeah. And like, I don't, I don't know, you know, I'm not, I don't pay attention to like the way the system works and them, but I feel like when people premeditate stuff like that, they should lose their rights, man. They should end up getting dropped off in another place somewhere and they never, no one ever knows what happened to them. They're just yes. like, and wipe them off the face of the earth. Otherwise, he's just going to sit in a cell and like then we're paying money or, you know, for, for, for them to live for 20 years until they decide what they're going to do with them. It's just I hate that. And I don't even want to breathe the same air as them. Right. Exactly. It's like, dude, when, when you do something like that, you knew what you were doing. It's premeditated. You planned it and you're alive. OK, that's weird to me. Yeah, it's it's sad, man. I, I don't get it. it any other country if he did that in another country they cut his hands off and cut his head off in front of his parents you know it's just it's just a good... <laughs> right <laughs> right but... so what do you guys have planned here uh, i mean after the alaska show are you going to be on the road for the summer or working on new music or yeah we, we got a bunch of stuff done already um for a record and we're just um at this point uh we're kind of in single mode because 
we haven't put out a lot of music in the past four years. I didn't realize that actually, I guess the, the pandemic kind of just took over. We were just being creative and just writing a lot during that, that, you know, our last record was in 2018. Right. So, and then, you know, we did the EP and then it's like, well, we need to put new music out. And a lot of these bands today are just putting single after single out. So we're like, well, let's just try to reestablish the band at radio a little bit. And, and, uh, you know, let's just go the single route and then we'll put a record out hopefully by the end of the year, man. Um, that's what we're, it's the record's done. It's just what, what's next. Oh, yeah. I have mixed feelings on the way that works. And I mean, no offense at all, but I, I'm old school, right? And, you know, I, I'm used to the whole album cycle and listening to the way you sequenced it and listening to the way you wrote the whole record, not used right. to this thing. And I, I get you have to make a living and that's the way the culture is going, but I'm still old school and don't really not on board with that at all. Yeah. And like I, a lot of bands are doing the single thing and play in the game and that weren't used to it before. And we're one of those bands. I feel like we're kind of late to the game because we weren't doing it. Right. I, I guess could have been, but you know, we, we just, it's that old school way of thinking, but you, you have to adjust with the times and, and um, you know, but fortunately the band, you know, had some success or, you know, in the early two thousands, mid two thousands and, and, and other, other um, avenues too, like with WWE, there's a lot of, of people that discovered the band through WWE and wrestling yeah. and video games and a lot of that stuff. So, you know, the saliva fan base is very, very, you know, you know, spread out. And um, it, it's been it's just been great, you know, that we're, we're still able to play music and, uh, you know, come into this thing. Uh, you know, I came in 11 years ago and uh, it's been it's, you know, from where it ended, where it started then to where it is now. It's like night and day how much we've just steadily been doing this and and it's been like a grind like you know it wasn't like i got in the band it's like all right cool let's just let's just go and right you know uh, sell out every night no <laughs> it's it's been a grind and it's been like um you know every show you treat it like treat it like there's ten thousand people there man you know we were just talking to the the guys from epica and they they were saying pretty much the same thing i mean the grind is what keeps you relevant and keeps you I guess above the rest of the crowd that's not grinding as hard, right? Well, I mean, there's always there's always a grind in a sense of when you're touring, you're you're grinding, but there are certain, you know, there's factors of like, okay, are you arena grinding? Are you like you right. club grinding? Are you kind of I mean, we we do a little bit of all of it. So we, you know, we'll play a 500 cap. We'll play, uh, you know, a 5,000 cap. I mean, it just depends on the market, depends on the bill, the lineup, you know, it'll do a festival and, but we're like, dude, just, Hey man, we're, we want to play for the fans. People want to show up. It's all good. You know, for us, we'll, we'll play. I, I absolutely love that, that attitude. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like there's a lot of bands that would be like, only this, only this, only this. Right. But you guys are like, well, we have this many fans here. We have this many fans here. We have this many fans here. Yeah. Let's play for them. We're just grateful that we can actually make make a living playing rock and roll. Playing music. Absolutely. I think, I think every band, especially the problem is a lot of these bands, they get they get too big and then their ego inflates and it's like they forget where they come from. You know what I mean? So um, it, it's for a band like us, it's um, it's that whole humble, grateful that we're actually able to do this even, you know, it's, yeah. you know, because it could be worse. It really could be, you know, because it's hard for new bands. It's very hard for new bands. You know, we, get head up, we get hit up all the time with bands wanting to buy on. And some of these bands are like, oh, we'll pay five hundred dollars a show. I'm like. Uh, you know, like diesel prices are like almost six dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> How are you going to make any money doing that? And I always feel bad. Like I never want to like, I never want to, you know, have that happen or, or take a band's money like that, you know? So it's just, yeah. Well, I, some friends of mine in a band called jet black stare toured with saliva. I think it was probably before you were in the band, but they said they couldn't rave enough about how nice of a band you guys were. 
I don't know if you were in in the band at the time or not. Wait, what year was that? I, I, that band name sounds familiar. Yeah, it was uh, probably 2009, 2010, somewhere in there. Yeah, well, I, I got in in 2011, but yeah, yeah, I, I, that that name is familiar though. Um, yeah, they were with uh, I think uh, Island Def Jam. I think they were okay. on. Yeah, 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 and that was probably yeah, that's probably back then. Yeah. We also have a mutual friend, Rory Romano, who was a TM for you guys, and it might have been just before you too. Right. Yeah. I I I've, I've definitely heard of him too. Anyways, but before I just I really appreciate you actually, you know, this morning we interviewed um Michael Monroe from Hanoi Rocks. And um I was expecting this larger than life ego guy because he's Michael Monroe, you know, like the guys in influenced everyone from Slash to whoever. But he was just down to earth and it reminds me a lot of the way you guys are you're like listen we just want to play rock and roll we just want to make a living playing rock and roll and to get that two times in one day is just so refreshing to see man i i can't say that enough like rock and roll needs a kick in the ass yes right you know and it needs a kick in the ass from good people yeah yeah and and for me it's like you know, and even think of a band like that. I mean, you want to talk about grind. I mean, they grinded hard, man. And he's still doing it. So yes. yeah, that's like, a, that's, that's, um, yeah. He just told us his 60th birthday was last, last week of the week before. So yeah, he's still going. Yeah. Wow. He just finished the tour with Alice Cooper and opened a set up <laughs> at Wembley for guns and roses. There's Wayne. What's up? Hey, <laughs> I was going to have Wayne start driving us while I did this, um, this interview. Like when Shauna hit me up yesterday, I was like, man, that's kind of cutting it close. Cause we got to drive to Orlando. Right. Like, when I'll do it. I'll just have Wayne drive for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I sure, appreciate you doing that. Thanks <laughs> Wayne. But yeah. So, um, I was going to say, yeah, that, that band, I mean, and they went through, they went through, a lot of tragedy too and stuff you know early on absolutely in their in their career but you know i think uh hey he's doing good you said he's open he opened for guns and roses over there i mean that's yeah that's crazy it. but but that's what i mean i think rock and roll needs that you know rock and roll used to need that rebellion and that uh that it, but i think now that rebellion is more inside of the music instead of like the personalities of people if that makes any sense Right. Yeah, I mean, you you can't change who you are as a person. No. Like, I just don't think people change. I think people are just kind of set in their ways, and it's just who they are. I think that you can adapt, and you can and and grow and try to improve your qualities of maybe the being a good human or something. But I think um, for me, like getting sober, I don't want to you know talk too much about dark shit. But yeah, you know, when I wasn't sober, it was you know, uh, you have a lot more going on upstairs and, um, you can become more agitated, I would think. Um, and then like getting sober was great for, for me because it was, um, you know, I felt like a new person, right. like, so, but you know, wh what do you do? It, everybody, we don't, I don't walk in your shoes, you don't walk in my shoes and not judging on what, people if people should drink or not but i know for me i had to like stop and it made me a completely better person yeah yeah i've i've met quite a few people that had to stop drinking for the same reason and it was like night and day the type of people they were you know because right. even right. when they were sober when they were drinking they were still like hung over and you know there was always always that one thing above them a little bit you know yeah, and that's another thing about like the social media it's stuff is people like they want to toy with people who have addictions and struggle. And it's like, it's really fucked up, man. Like, cause yeah. just reading the thing about Bam again, you know, Bam Margera was like, damn, I thought he was doing well. And then you hear like, they can't find him and he's missing. It's like, and then you just have people just being so negative about it. And like, Oh yeah, he's a millionaire and all this stuff. Who cares? It's like, dude, you have all the money in the world. Look at all the people that have died by suicide and they were, they had millions in the bank. I mean, yep. it doesn't yeah. matter. You don't yeah. walk in, you don't know what they're going through. And it's like, you always want to try to uplift somebody and make them feel like, look, there is a way out, you know, but 
but it's up to them. They have to figure, they have to find it. You know, they really do. But us all around them as peers just have to be encouraging just a little, you know, <laughs> that's beautiful. I love it. Beautiful. This has been a great interview. It's been so positive. I love it. I love positive interviews, man. <laughs> the world needs more positive interviews. <laughs> the peace. Yes. Shirt, man. But just wait till we post this and all the negative comments come on. Oh, what? absolutely. They'll, they'll be like, why is that bald guy in glasses keep talking about nice stuff? <laughs> right. Right. But you know what? Those people were going to hate it anyway. So it's, Yeah, it's, it's true. <laughs> yeah. I, I 100% agree. Chris, you got anything else? I don't, man. No. I think that's all I had. Uh, I know you got a documentary coming out as well, right? I guess we should mention that. No, that, that came out. It was just like a 20-minute doc just uh, around the every 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, that happened we put it out it's on youtube it's just you can kind of go see the making of that and then wayne and paul tell stories of like the early early years and stuff too which is really really cool it's a good watch and it's not like you know it's not two hours long right i haven't seen the band in but it was definitely before your time it was on a veer union theory of a dead man tour i believe veer union there years, you go I'm years and, years and years yeah. ago yeah, they did some shows not that long ago, too, like a year or two ago. Yeah, Very yeah. Good. I Great love dude. Crispin, man. Super nice guy. They just came through D.C. Uh, like in June, I guess. Nice. So I've recorded their drummer, Ricardo, quite a few times. So I was like, oh, hey, I, you're coming through town. That's awesome. Nice guys. Good band, yeah. too. There's a lot of good bands out there, man, that it, it's like at least with Spotify and stuff like that, you can discover new acts. You know, the social media is good for discovering new artists. Absolutely. And for artists who promote themselves and, and, you know, get their name out there. Um, and that's something that obviously none of us had 20 years ago, but um, you don't have to rely on, you know, labels as much. You don't have to rely on. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. But it still, it still goes back to the song. The song has to be good. If the song is good, you're you're uh you a good start yeah yeah you have a fighting chance if the song's good right thank you my friend i appreciate it safe travels to alaska have a blast thanks man see have you a guys. good right. show cheers we'll see you right. hello out there yes we're out there everyone i'm hal schwartz and i'm flynn mcclain together we host none but the brave a podcast dedicated to the music and career of bruce springsteen Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimbut the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!